So it's Adam Scottson here with uh, Betting Directory. We've got Warrington Wolves' brand new signing, Blake Austin. Blake, how are you okay? How's it going? Yeah, good. Thanks, mate. Yeah, thanks for having us. Um, so could you just tell us a bit, how did you first get into rugby league, obviously playing, playing in Australia? Um, started when I was four. Uh, mum and dad were obviously pretty big rugby league fans. And, um, you know, I've got early remember, memories of my dad sort of playing amateur and you know, I was actually his ball boy. And, um, so yeah, probably my, my parents sort of, I wouldn't say pushed me into it, but um, where I'm from, it's you don't have much of a choice. It's a bit of a religion out there, and um, yeah, I'm sort of glad I, I got I got involved. Cool. Who was the the first ever club you played for at amateur? Um, I played a season with St Patrick's Blacktown. Um, as I said, started when I was four, and mum and dad were my, my coach and manager, and um, yeah, got got really good memories of, of playing footy when I was. A kid. How was that playing with your dad, like as your coach? To be honest, I was good when we were young. To be honest, growing like because he was my coach right the way through, and um, as I got a bit older and formed my own opinions, we clashed a little bit, but um, it's certainly one thing I, I wouldn't want to coach my son um, going forward because I, I don't necessarily like the relationship with the father and son. Obviously, it's, he's got sort of 20 kids to look after, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm grateful for everything my dad and, and my mum have done for me throughout my career. Oh, that's good because uh, I remember when I, I was younger playing sport and my, my dad was my coach and a lot of the other parents were like, my dad felt like he couldn't give me play of the season because I was his son or he couldn't give me a man of the match or whatever so it's I, I do get have you got a message for your dad maybe um, do you think you deserve player of the season I, I, I'll be honest I scored I scored quite well because I was <laughs> playing football but uh, yeah I scored quite a few goals so dad fair play for not having favouritism <laughs> but <laughs> um, so tell us a bit about obviously you mentioned your, your rugby career um, playing from from a young age in, in Parramatta Sorry? Was it Parramatta? Um, Blacktown, yeah, Penrith, yeah, yeah. Penrith Junior. Yeah, yeah. So uh, can you tell us a bit about like, where you grew up? and. Yeah, so I grew up in Western Sydney, which is a you know a real working class area. Um, you know, we were in Housing Commission for a long time and until I was 12. Uh, actually, nine. Actually, I won a car in the footy show, uh, which we then went on to sell that car and it allowed mum and dad to, to have a deposit to buy a house. and. That was sort of not something that was probably going to be achievable at the time and uh, that's something I'll always be proud of and, and a great story to tell. And, um, but just come from a family that um, we certainly weren't poor but you know we weren't wealthy and um, they were, the, the one thing that, that my parents always done really well that there, were, there was never an expense spared on sport. They, you know, they, they got me around to a lot of different sports and um, made me who I am today I suppose so I'll always be grateful for that. And, um, yeah, just a, a sport-loving kid that grew up, um, you know, in a really supportive family. Brilliant. Um, so, um, apparently, we've read that the, the Sydney Morning Herald said that you qualified to play for Portugal because you'd eaten a Portuguese chicken burger. Can you tell us more about that? Mate, yeah. If I had a dollar for every time I've been asked <laughs> this question, mate, I wouldn't need to be playing rugby league, that's for sure. Um, so my dad knew the coach and I got invited for a game of footy. I was only 16 at the time and, um, you know, being a footy mad 16-year-old, I, I didn't say no to a game of footy. So I um, showed up to play and ended up being one of their better players. So they, they invited me back quite a few more times. And, um, you know, like I say, if the pale skin and the blue eyes didn't give it away, it's, um, yeah, I don't have any, any Portuguese heritage, but I have represented uh, Portugal in, the, in their rugby league team. Yeah, you've you've also taken part in State of Origin as well. How was how was that? No, I haven't haven't taken part in State of Origin. Yeah. No, nah, no, nah, I come close sure. a few years ago, but no, nah, I haven't. Oh, yeah. sure, Played for the city team. That's so, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah put, represented city. That was a um, yeah pretty big thrill, mate. It's um, you know, I had a, a fairly good game for them too. Un unfortunately, yeah. wasn't selected for the Blues after that, but um, yeah, that was a big big moment moment in my career to, to represent city. Yeah, I must have mis must have mis yeah, misread right, that. No but, worries, bro. Um, so. Can you tell us, pinpoint one try that sticks out that you've scored in your career? Um, uh, probably my, my first ever try in, in the NRL. It was my second game and I'd actually, I'd started on the bench and I, I literally, I, I got subbed on on the 40 metre line I was and, and our team was attacking the try line. And as I was subbed on, it was last tackle. So, and the ball was out on the right side. So they were doing a cross field kick to the left. So I sort of handed me an interchange card over and I, I've sprinted on and, and sprinted straight down the touchline. And as I've got there, the wingers batted it straight back into my hands and I, I sort of placed it down. So I'd only been on the field for 
less than, than 20 seconds. And, yeah. So uh, kind of right place, right time. Yeah, but, but we still needed that to, and that to get it And that was sort of first try in the, in the NRL, so that was a um, yeah, great experience. Yeah, good, good. Um, so if we can try and shy away from Jonathan Thurston, who's the best kicker that you've seen in rugby league or played with? Best kicker? Yeah. Goal kicker? Goal, goal kicker could be on oh, field. I think like. no one can... Mm, I mean, there's been some good ones, but I think Hazemel Masri's uh, has been one of the best you, we, we, we've seen. Um, Andrew Johns was obviously very good, and um, I'm not sure about percentage wise, but you know, I think there's certainly been better than Thurston, and um, yeah, I'd, I'd probably put Hazemel Masri up in, uh, as the pinnacle. He's the guy that really uh, transformed the the role, and um, obviously uh, he was a handy footballer, but everyone certainly knows him for his goal kicking. And you know, I played with a guy in Canberra, Jared Croker, that. Um, you know, has a really handy you know, success rate and someone that I've witnessed put in countless hours and, you know, it's a role that, that, that can't be taken lightly. It um, takes a lot of hours and practice to get get the balls to go through the sticks more often than not. It's, it's one of them things when you score the try you need to convert it. So there's mentally, I, bet I haven't been a kicker myself, but I can imagine how, how mentally draining it could be, especially like in a, in a big game. Big game of footy like that. Yeah, and you know, Jared's a guy that's that's won plenty of games for us, and he's he's also been on the other side and, and missed a couple of kicks. So you're right, mate. It does carry a burden at times, and um, you know, it's not a role that you can take lightly. If you if you're the team kicker, you have to put in the work, and um, yeah, cool. Um, so obviously in NRL, we'll, we'll be seeing it rolled out across Super League with the uh, with the golden point at the end of a game if it's been a draw. Is there any moment? like a golden point moment when you played in, in the NRL that, that stuck out? What was the best one you've been involved in? Probably might be quite a few or... Uh, we, no, we had one at Canberra. So we, we, I think there was about three three minutes or a little bit less than three minutes on the clock and I actually kicked the one pointer to get us one point in front. So we sort of thought that was going to be enough, but we raced back and we were playing the Knights and they ended up getting getting to the kickoff with about 40 seconds remaining. They had time to do their kickoff and they went short, batted it back and two plays later they ended up kicking the field goal to draw it back up. So um, then it had to go to Golden Point and uh, we sort of went shot for shot for the first five minutes and um, no one could hit one. And then I went for one in the second half of the, the Golden Point period and it actually sprayed to the right. And there's footage of the coach on the sideline like spraying me for missing the kick and stuff like that. but. Um, as they've flashed to him and, and quickly flashed away, the ball's actually landed in the end goal and bounced back into the hands of our winger. So off a drop kick, it actually, um, you know, I call it a try assist because it, it landed straight in the hands of our winger and he, he scored the try and won the game. Oh, brilliant. Um, so one culture over here that, that we've seen, I don't know if you do it in Australia, um, like a, an after game song. So like all the players in the in the the dressing room after doing a big chant. Have you been involved in many of them? And if yeah, so, man, I think you know. Yeah, as a sport, every I think most sports have a team song to sing at, at the end of a victory, and it's certainly one of the uh, one of the most special moments to be a part of after after a good victory. Yeah. yeah which is the best one you've you've been involved in from? Actually, moment? I just heard the Warrington one for the first time yesterday, and um, that's yeah, a pretty Ratch, handy song, Stephen, mate. I, Stephen Ratchford was on about that earlier. Yeah, right? I think it's, it's a great it's song, dope, mate. Yeah, yeah I, some of the ones back home are, are quite boring, but. Uh, the Warrington one had a good uh, good rhythm to it, and yeah, I really enjoyed it. I didn't know the words, but I enjoyed listening to yeah, it. Yeah, I'm sure you'll pick it up after after a few games, a um, few wins on the on the on the board. Um, so we talked to a couple of the other players about um, the fact that they like to go to the coffee shops and like go for a brew after training. Um, have you have you been been down for a brew with them yet, or? Um, no, we don't go for as much. Like obviously back home, it's a it's a big thing. We duck off between between sessions and, and drink a lot of coffee. But um, over here, it's a little bit of a different. Like we training's a little bit away from from coffee shops, and we're sort of into our next session a bit quicker. So um, it's a little bit different. I've you know I've got my my coffee machine at home, which you know I enjoy using. But we've also got some really good uh, spots just at Stockton Eve, just down the road. So. Uh, certainly with the, the kids and the missus we get down there a lot but um, not as much of a coffee culture here within the group I suppose yeah, yeah. yeah. so you've just mentioned like your, your missus and your kids how have they settled in how have you all settled into to life in in, in England in Warrington yeah really good mate I've got you know I've got to give them a really big rap because it's you know it's easy for me I get to hang out with uh, you know 30 guys every day with with the common goal but um, you know those guys have Kids have got to, had to change school, and, and the missus got to make you know all, all, all new friends as well. So 
Um, but they've made the transition really good. I've, you know, I've got a missus that's really supportive. She was, uh, she was all for the move and, and certainly confident she'd handle the lifestyle. So, um, yeah, everything's going really well. Oh, good, good. I'm glad to hear that. Um, so we spoke to uh, Stefan Ratchford earlier on and he gave us his dad joke. Have you got any, any dad jokes? <laughs> no, no. I don't, no, I'm a cool dad, man. I don't, <laughs> Steph would have dad jokes. I don't have dad jokes, mate, no. Cool. Anyway, so this has been Blake Austin. Uh, we'd like to welcome him to, to England, to Warrington. Hope to see see a great season for, for the Wolves. And uh, best of luck. Thanks for having me, mate. Cheers. Cheers.